Hey there creepy peeps, my name is Nightmare Maven and I like to talk about horror. Why is my hair doing this weird flippy thing? I don't know. But am I gonna be staring at it in the viewfinder the whole time I'm filming? Yes. As you can tell from the title of this video, I'm gonna be talking about five movies in which the book was actually worse, which I feel like is not the saying. <laughs> One of my lovely patrons requested that I make this video, so of course I'm gonna oblige them. Speaking of my lovely patrons, I want to thank them for supporting my channel. Thank you guys so, so much. If you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link in the description. It's always down there. Hint, without you clicking the link, it's a lot of movie night hangouts. <laughs> First up is The Shining by Stephen King. So in this particular instance, I'm talking about Stanley Kubrick's film, not the miniseries. I want to talk about this because I feel like there's always such a divide talking about Kubrick's adaptation and the book, which are vastly different. You can watch me and Emma from Spooky Astronauts talk about it in uh, January's Does This Offend You? The first Does This Offend You of 2021. We go into way more detail. On a lot of adaptations, I think where bookworms have a problem is we're so attached to the book. I think all Kubrick was doing is just interpreting certain aspects of the book to film and kind of making it his own thing almost as it would have been impossible for him to include everything in the book and you can tell like when you watch the movie especially if you've read the book he obviously picked up on and vibed with certain aspects of this book more than others and those are the ones he chose to put on the screen so I just wanted to include that one I don't necessarily think one is better than the other. I like them both for different reasons. I gave the book a four out of five on Goodreads and I, I give the the film a four out of five so I, I just wanted to include that. All right so next movie that I think is better than the book is another horror classic and that is The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. Well the book is and then the film by William Friedkin. The movie doesn't deviate actually that far from the book. It's I think I might have even mentioned this in my review of it too. There's kind of a little chunk here towards like the the back. This isn't exactly it but it's towards the back here almost at the end that just gets omitted <laughs> from the movie entirely. Father Karras is doing all of this extensive research into Reagan's problem in order to find like irrefutable proof that an exorcism needs to be performed <laughs> but to me it just it ground the <laughs> it ground the the tension building to a halt I, because I knew we were building up to an exorcism and even if you haven't seen the movie before the book is called The Exorcist so you imagine somewhere in your head we're building up to an exorcism at some point. The movie makes a more clear decision as to whether Reagan is possessed or not and I feel like the book throughout the entire book even up to the end kind of leaves it a little more open-ended where like the events are pretty much the same but I don't know it's something about like the wording makes it feel like it's not definitive that she was actually possessed or not where you could maybe interpret it in a couple of different ways. I just felt like I experienced this story in the wrong order like I probably should have read the book first before seeing the movie but I don't know how old I was when I saw The Exorcist but I knew I had no idea that it was based on a, a book. <laughs> um, in case I, I wrote down my ratings in case it's interesting or not. I gave the book a three out of five on Goodreads and I gave the movie a five out of five. The next one I did talk about kind of recently so I'll try and go quickly through this one um, and that is The Ritual by Adam Neville. I just feel like <laughs> the book is almost so entirely different from what goes on in the movie especially at the end. I don't know how much I want to get into like all the little minute differences but the end of the book the people that Luke encounter felt like a lot more of a letdown like it didn't feel as sinister or life-threatening. I mean all I'll say is it's just a bunch of stupid teenagers is what it is. Let's go ahead and say it sorry um, I think the movie's been out for a couple years now uh, versus the like kind of cult like community that Luke encounters at the end of the movie that like worship 
the monster. It feels a lot more sinister, like they know what they're doing and that scares you, like especially, you know, and that makes you afraid for the characters who are now prisoners here. Also like the addition of the fifth character in the movie that is killed at the very beginning and that being the catalyst for the reason these four men are going on this trip. So we understand the situation, we understand why they're all kind of like a little tense around each other versus this one where it's really just Luke being an asshole. Like he thinks all of his friends are losers now because they all like have wives and or children. Thinks two of his friends are just like fat and slowing them down and it's just, he's just a dick. And he's just the worst character to follow through the whole book where I feel like the movie makes him a more redeemable character. Like he, he has our sympathy. He's, no, he can be kind of an asshole, but there's a reason for that. I gave the book a two out of five on Goodreads and the movie has a four out of five for me, which could have gone up. That rating may have gone up when I watched it after reading the book. I can't remember it exactly. <laughs> okay, next on my list, I don't actually have the book to show because I unhauled it because I DNF'd it. <laughs> it was a creepy book club pick and it's the only creepy book club pick I've actually not finished and that is The Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> I feel like the movie adaptation, once again, if we're talking about like the movie movie is still better because it just it just makes it more human, I guess, if that makes sense. So the book is told like in in retrospect, but from a journalist's point of view. So I feel like the chapters that I read, I think I got through maybe like a third of the book before I was just like, I can't fucking read this anymore. Um, <laughs> it was very just like straightforward, pragmatic, like a journalist would write. Very unfeeling. And I feel like compared to the movie and especially compared to the musical, which is just like all of the emotions, the book just felt cold and it just felt like sterile and it had no life to it. And <laughs> even the few moments that I did happen to read that included a scary part weren't even that scary. It was just like reading an article. Like <laughs> Again, I, I think this one, I can definitively say it's because I've seen the musical so many times. I've watched the movie, I don't know how many times I've seen it live, I think three times. <laughs> I don't have a rating for the book, obviously, because I DNF'd it. Um, and the movie obviously is a five out of five for me. I love it. So last one on my list isn't a horror movie, but I know a lot of people in the community really like this movie. Um, and we watch it every October, pretty much all of us. And that is Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. This is another instance where I actually gave the book and the movie the same rating. I liked them for different reasons, but ultimately like if you're gonna make me choose which one is better, I'm gonna go with the movie and here's why. <laughs> I feel like the big difference <laughs> here between the book and the movie is the magic. Now I'm not saying there's no magic in this, it's definitely very like magical realism. Um, I feel like it's a lot more heavy handed on the realism. The The magic in this is such a minor character that it, <laughs> that I almost forget that it's included in this, that there are some like weird happenings. More about the relationship in this family of women. And for that reason, I really, really liked the book, whereas the the movie still had this relationship between these different generations of women. I also like that they added the relationship of between uh, Sally and Jillian and the town that they live in. Then at the end of the movie, you have them all coming together. I just love the message that we all come together to defeat the patriarchy, which is <laughs> my interpretation of that ending. So I feel like the movie just did a really good job of kind of having that feminist touch to it, the realism to it, and then amplifying the magic. That to me is what sets the movie just slightly above the book. I rated them both the same. I gave them both a five out of five, the book and the movie, of course. Um, but like I said, I feel like <laughs> 
I, I just put it just the movie just slightly above the book uh, so I wanted to mention that even though it's not a horror. So there you have it those are five movies that I thought were way better than the books they were adapted from. Of course I want to know in the comments uh, which movie adaptations you think are better than the books in the comments. As it should be pointed out that every single book I'm talking about I've seen the movie first before reading the book which I don't usually do and these five books make up the entire list <laughs> of books that I read after seeing the movie so it's only these five <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna leave me some comments like that down there uh maybe include if you can remember if you saw the movie first before you read the book maybe we'll do like a little experiment in the comments to see uh <laughs> <laughs> to see if uh, watching the movie first has an effect on our opinions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. Become a creepy peep today. I post two new videos a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. So I will see you... Today is Friday. I'll see you Tuesday with a new video. Until then, stay strange. <laughs> Bye.